to the Middle East now. And Israel's defence minister has said it is an opportune moment to reach a deal on the release of hostages held by Hamas. Talks are being held in Cairo with Qatar mediating. One of its spokesmen has expressed cautious optimism. Meanwhile, Palestinians who've returned to the city of Khan Yunis in Gaza have spoken of the devastation they found after months of intense fighting. Israel says its troops have pulled back from the area in southern Gaza to prepare for the next stage of the conflict. More than 300 aid trucks have entered Gaza. That's the highest number in a day since the start of the war. Our Middle East correspondent Lucy Williamson reports from Jerusalem. For months, Khan Yunis was a city of targets. Its apartment blocks and hospitals, seen by Israel as hiding places for Hamas. Residents returned today, searching for their city homes inside the concrete mountains, as Israel continued talks with Hamas on a ceasefire deal. The destruction is huge. Khan Yunis has been destroyed. It all needs to be rebuilt now. It's not suitable for animal to live in, let alone human being. I wasn't expecting this destruction. Our biggest request is that they withdraw from our land. It's better for us to have tents on the rubble of our home rather than being displaced. Hamas launched rockets from Khan Yunis, the army said, even as its troops withdrew. It hit back with airstrikes. Israel's Prime Minister has promised total victory in this war, but Hamas is still fighting, and the withdrawal leaves just a skeleton Israeli presence across the middle of the Strip. This is being presented as a temporary tactical withdrawal, and that buys Benjamin Netanyahu more time. Under American pressure to agree a ceasefire deal and pressure from his own cabinet to keep the war going, he's framing this as a pause not an end in the fighting, keeping both foreign and domestic allies on track. We are working constantly to attain our objectives. First and foremost, the release of all of our hostages and the achieving of total victory over Hamas. This victory requires entering Rafah and eliminating the terrorist battalions there. This will happen. There is a date. Returning residents to their homes could smooth the path to a ceasefire deal, but it could also help those in Israel who want to continue the war. Israel is facing tough US demands to move refugees out of Rafah before any ground offensive there. A day after the Israeli withdrawal, it's clear how much the face of Khan Yunis has changed, much less the face of the war. Lucy Williamson, BBC News, Jerusalem. Well, I spoke to my colleague Hugo Bishega in Jerusalem a little earlier about the prospects of a successful ceasefire hostage deal. Yeah, it's very interesting, Samantha, because yesterday the Qataris who have been, you know, mediating these negotiations and even the Israeli foreign minister, they said there was cautious optimism that uh, a deal was possible. But now Hamas is saying that there is nothing new in this proposal, that the offer on the table doesn't meet their demands. And essentially they have three main demands. They want a permanent ceasefire, in other words, the end of the war. They want all Israeli troops out of Gaza, and they also want displaced residents to be allowed to return to northern Gaza. Now, in the past, the Israelis have rejected those demands as unacceptable. They say that this would only give Hamas the opportunity to regroup. But there is a lot of pressure uh, for a deal to be reached, especially from uh, the Americans. So the head of the CIA is in Cairo for those talks. And there is a lot of pressure at home as well on the private Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu to reach a deal, especially from the families of the hostages, 133 hostages who remain in captivity in Gaza. Essentially, they say that time is running out to save those hostages. They say that the uh, Israeli strategy of trying to put military pressure on Hamas to negotiate hasn't really worked. But at the same time, the Prime Minister is also under pressure from uh, some of his hardline allies who are against the idea of making concessions. They say we need to finish the job, we need to destroy Hamas. So I think it really shows how difficult these negotiations are and we still don't know whether uh, major obstacles in those talks have been resolved.
Yeah, and meanwhile, Hugo, more aid is getting in, the largest amount since the war started six months ago. Uh, how is that operation going? Is it getting to the people who desperately need it? And do we know if that will continue? Yeah, so the Israelis said that yesterday more than 400 trucks were uh, allowed to enter Gaza. They say that this was uh, the largest number of uh, trucks with uh, aid supplies uh, that entered Gaza since the beginning of the war. And obviously this only happened after a lot of pressure, again, especially from the Americans, following that uh, deadly attack on the aid convoy. So the Israelis were under a lot of pressure to uh, allow more uh, humanitarian assistance to Gaza. We know that there have been warnings of famine, especially in northern Gaza. And now the Israelis saying that uh, they have, uh, you know, allowed more trucks into the territory. So this is part of the plan, part of the measures that have been announced by the Israeli military, by the Israeli authorities to improve, uh, you know, the level of humanitarian assistance uh, for the population of Gaza. And obviously, you know, we we're talking about those ceasefire negotiations that are happening in Cairo. Uh, the hope here is that a deal uh, is going to result in at least, a, you know, in a pause in hostilities that would, of course, allow more humanitarian aid to reach those Palestinians uh, who are, you know, in desperate need in parts of Gaza.